Here I have a brand new cold card Mark IV, and in this video, I'll show you how to do the initial setup of your cold card. I will show you what to do when you boot your cold card up for the first time. We will set a pin, and then we will generate a new seed phrase. This video is part one of the cold card guides, and I will show you how to go about actually using your cold card with Sparrow Wallet in the next video of the cold card guides. There are a whole series of cold card guides on the way, so make sure to subscribe to this channel and put on notifications to be the first to see the new cold card guides. Let's go ahead and get started by examining the tamper evident bag that we received our cold card in. Here I have my cold card and it is still sealed in its tamper evident bag. Before opening the bag, you want to inspect this for any damage or signs of it being previously opened. You'll also notice that it's got a number on there. This is called the bag number and it's super important. We don't wanna throw this bag away. We just wanna make sure this matches what we see on the cold card, which we'll check for later. So in my case, everything looks good on this bag. So I'm going to go ahead and open it. All right, I've managed to get that seal off, not perfectly, but we'll see now it says here void opened. Now we know our cold card bag has definitely been opened. Now we can go ahead and pull our cold card out of this bag. And there we go, I'm going to put this bag aside because we will need this number a bit later. So I'm putting that to the side. And here we have everything that comes with our cold card. Firstly, the cold card, two stickers, then we've got a wallet backup card where we can write our words, our pin and our anti-phishing words. And here we've got the bag number once again. So this should match what we see here. And yeah, I can see that matches. Now let's go ahead and actually boot up our cold card. When booting up your cold card, it never has to actually connect to a computer. So I suggest getting something like this, the cold power or using a power bank to power your cold card device. So I've got the cold power over here. I'm going to pull the cold card out of its cover. I'm going to plug this in. And now I'm going to turn this cold power on to boot up my cold card. And here, the first thing we will see on the device is cold cards terms of sale. And it says by using this product, you are accepting our terms of sale and use. So if you want to read that, you can, but you click eight to scroll down and you can read the full document at coldcardwallet.com forward slash legal. So to accept this, I'm going to click the tick over here. So I press okay. And here is my bag number that I should see on the bag. So let's compare that quickly. Here is my bag and I can see 154893870732. Also on this, little plastic that came in the bag. I see the same number and we can see that matches. Cool, so that's perfect. And it says here, your new cold card should have arrived sealed in a bag with the above number. Please take a moment to confirm the number and look for any signs of tampering. We've checked all of that, everything is in order. So I'm going to continue scrolling and it says take pictures and contact uh, their support if you have any concerns. I have none, everything looks good. So I'm going to click this tick. Now what we need to do is actually choose a pin code for our cold card. So I'm just going to leave this on choose pin code and click the check mark over here. And now it's going to say choose pin, pick the main wallet's pin code now. Be more clever, but an example, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So that's just an example, a pretty bad one. So we're not going to do that. Um, let's just continue scrolling down. It lets us know that it has two parts, a prefix and a suffix. So there's two parts to this code. In their example, one, two, three would be part one and part two would be four, five, six, seven. Each part must be between two and six digits long and the total length can be as long as 12 digits. Now the prefix part of the pin, so the first part of our pin, determines the anti-phishing words that you will see each time you boot up your cold card. And this pin that we set protects access to this cold card device and is not a factor in the wallet or seed words or private keys. There is absolutely no way to recover a forgotten pin. So we wanna make sure to write that down. Cool, I've read through all of this. I'm going to click the tick again at the bottom right. And here it says warning, there's absolutely no way to reset or factory reset the cold card if you forget the pin. 
So make sure to write that down or just don't forget it. Now, as we scroll down, we'll see it says press six to prove you read to the end of this message. So I'm just going to click six and now we can actually enter our pin. Before we set this pin, let me explain what it actually is. All the pin does is actually secure the access to your cold card. Only somebody with your pin can access your cold card. And on your cold card, you would have your Bitcoin private key or recovery phrase loaded. So you want to make sure nobody with physical access to your cold card can just go ahead and extract that seed. So the cold card secures your seed phrase behind this pin. Somebody who has this pin but doesn't have access to your cold card can never access your Bitcoin. They will need both the cold card and the pin. They would enter the pin, they would get access to the cold card, then they can extract your seed phrase, which is the most important part of securing your Bitcoin. So just to emphasize, all the pin does is it prevents people from accessing your cold card, which has your seed phrase loaded on the device. So let's go ahead and set our pin. First, we need to set the pin's prefix or the first part of our pin. Remember that this can be between two and six numbers. In my case, I'm just going to do four for the prefix and four for the suffix. And I'm going to get this pin by using a random number generator on my computer. Cool, so quickly on my computer, just to the side here, it's giving me 4009. So I'm going to write that down on this wallet backup card quickly. As we can see, I've entered the prefix on this backup card. So I'm going to put that in the device now quickly. It's 4009. Then I click this check mark. And here are my anti phishing words. Now, these are important to have written down as well. So, here on the card under anti phishing code words, I'm going to write those two words down. There we go. I have written down those two words. Now, every time you boot up your cold card and you enter your pin prefix, these two phishing words should pop up. If they don't and the pin is correct, it's an indication that your cold card has been swapped out or it's a malicious cold card. It's not the same one that you initially set up. All right, so I've written these down. I'm going to click this tick over here. And now I need to enter the rest of my pin, the second part or the suffix. So I'm going to do another random number generator quickly. And I've got 3729. So I'm going to write that down again on this second part of the device pin. And there we go. I've written down my pin on the backup card. So now let me go ahead and put that into the cold card. It's three, seven, two, nine. And then I click this tick. Cool. Now it wants us to confirm the pin at the bottom. It says confirm pin value. So part one for me would be four, zero, zero, nine. Then I click the tick. It's going to ask me about these phishing words. So if I take a look at my card, they match. I see spawn and duty. That means this is the correct cold card device. I click the tick again, and now I need to enter the rest of my pin, which is 3729. So I go 3729, and then I click the tick. Now it's just saving all of that info I've given it. And here we are at the main screen, and the first option is to create new seed words. But before we actually go ahead and create our new Bitcoin wallet or our new seed words, Let's first update our cold card. So because it's just been shipped to me, it's very likely not on the latest version. I show you how to update your cold card in another video, which I suggest you go ahead and watch now before we carry on and create our new seed. I'm not going to do that in this video, otherwise it will drag on for too long. So go ahead and watch that other video quickly. All right, I've upgraded my cold card to the latest version and I filmed a video on how you can do that, which is up on YouTube. So here I have my cold card, which is currently running the latest version. And now we can go ahead and create our new Bitcoin wallet. To do this, we just want to click on new seed words, which is at the top of the menu screen there. So I'm just going to click on this check mark on new seed words, and it's going to give us four options. Firstly, we can either make a 24 or 12 word seed phrase using the random number generator built within cold card, or we can generate 24 or 12 words using dice rolls. So if you don't trust cold cards, random number generator, you can instead use your own source of randomness like dice. 
and you can generate a seed with dice rolls. I'll show you how to create a seed with dice rolls and how to verify the dice roll math in another video. For this video, we're just going to do the 24 word default option. So I'm going to click on that and there it says generating. So now cold cards random number generator has generated me a new 24 word seed phrase. And these are the secret words that will back up our Bitcoin wallet. So you wanna write these down and keep these somewhere safe and private. If you lose your cold card, you will need these words to recover your Bitcoin and anyone else with these words essentially has access to your Bitcoin. So this is super important to secure. So what I'm going to do is go ahead and write down my 24 words on this wallet backup card. Here we can see my first word is moon. So I'm going to write down moon on the card next to word one over here. There we go, I've written down word one. Now I'm going to do word two, which is ball and word three, which is valid. I've got those first three words down and now I just wanna scroll down using the down arrow until I've written down all 24 words. And just remember that this order is very important. You wanna write down the words in the correct order. So I'm gonna go ahead and write all of these down and I'll see you when that is done. All right, I've written down all 24 words. And just another reminder, this essentially is your Bitcoin. This backs up your Bitcoin. Anyone with this has your Bitcoin. So you really wanna make sure this is written down neatly it's all tidy, it's somewhere safe, it's somewhere private, somewhere secure, so that in the case that this cold card is ever lost, you can still access your Bitcoin. All right, before we proceed, I just want to show you one thing. If you scroll down, it says, please check and double check your notes, there will be a test. So again, cold cards just emphasizing that this needs to be written down correctly, which we'll have a test on in the next step. But if we scroll even more uh, further down, it says press four to add some dice rolls into the mix and press one to view as QR code. So if you want to add some extra randomness into this, you can press four and then you would roll some dice, then select the dice rolls that you rolled and then it would just add a bit of extra randomness to your seed phrase. In this case, I'm not going to do that. I'm going to just use cold cards, true random number generator, which generated this seed phrase. But again, feel free to add some extra randomness by pressing four and adding your own dice rolls. All right, so I've written down all my words. I'm going to click this tick to proceed. And here is that test it spoke of earlier. So it's going to ask what each word is. So it's asking what is word five. And here on my sheet, I can see it's smile. So I'm going to click option two, which is smile. Then it's going to ask what word 10 is, which I can see is mosquito. So I click on one. And then I'm going to do this for all 24 words. All right, so I've been tested on all my words and now it says applying. So after that seed has been applied to the cold card, it's going to ask us if we wish to enable NFC. And this lets you tap your mobile phone on the cold card and transfer data easily via NFC. And then it also says you can change this later under settings, hardware on off. So I would prefer to have this disabled. I don't want this feature on my cold card. So I'm going to click on this X over here. And now it's asking, do you wish to disable the USB port? If you intend to operate in air gap mode where this cold card is never connected to anything but power, then this will disable the USB port. And then again, it says you can change this later under settings, hardware on and off. So I'm going to be using this cold card fully air gapped using an SD card. So I'm going to turn this off by clicking the cross on the left here. And we are now ready to start using this cold card. What we've done is we set a pin on our cold card device. Then we generated a seed using the random number generator. And now that seed phrase is loaded onto the cold card on one of these secure element chips. And now we can actually start using this Bitcoin wallet that is basically loaded on this cold card right now. So that is how to do the initial setup of your new cold card. 
In my next video, I'll show you how to actually use this cold card with a wallet like Sparrow Wallet. What we'll need to do is export the public key onto Sparrow where we can start seeing our Bitcoin addresses and we can start receiving Bitcoin. Then in Sparrow, we can also start building transactions to send Bitcoin out of our wallet. And then we'll need to sign them offline on our cold card using this ready to sign feature. So again, I'll show you how to use your cold card with Sparrow Wallet in the next part of these video guides. You can find all the cold card guides on my website or in a YouTube playlist. And I'll see you in the next one. Cheers, everyone.